Welcome to Wales, welcome to my kitchen garden. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some chef made, simple and low cost meals. On the menu, we have three delicious dishes. We are making egg fried rice, but the thing is I don't eat egg, so I'm gonna make an omelet without egg. I promise you, you won't tell the difference, it's incredible. Then I'm gonna be making whole roasted cauliflower cheese. This is an epic dish that you can just put down in the center of a dinner table and everyone can tuck in. And then finally, a mushroom stroganoff, a classic dish that is delicious and is super simple. So let's get straight into it. So for that omelet, for the egg fried rice, that isn't an omelet or even egg, but tastes just like it. First thing you need to do into a blender, add some tofu. Tofu is a low cost protein source. So I like to use that in recipes whenever I can. Then we're gonna add some chickpea flour, also known as gram flour. This is a great ingredient, also low cost and amazing to make things like bhajis or fritters too. Baking powder, turmeric, so this turmeric is just adding a nice yellow color, but again, it's optional ingredient to save you money if you don't put it in, although it's the tiniest amount of turmeric. And now I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast, another optional ingredient, but it gives it a lovely nutty, almost umami flavor. Then I'm gonna add some salt and some non-dairy milk to help it blitz into a batter. Don't forget guys, the four written recipes for everything I make in today's video are on my website. Click the link below this video to view them free of charge. Now, just because these are simple meals doesn't mean they can't be flavorsome. And that's what I find whenever I see people making simple recipes, they're always bland. Let me show you how to make things flavorsome just by doing a few extra steps. I'm gonna get some oil in my non-stick pan and then crispy fry some onions and some garlic in the pan, which I'm gonna use to top the egg fried rice at the end, but also it's gonna flavor the oil up so that when we cook this lovely egg-free omelet, it's gonna absorb all that beautiful oniony, garlicky flavor too. When the onions are golden and crisp, remove them from the pan, leaving the oil behind. So now we've got this lovely onion and garlic infused oil. It's now time to cook off our fake omelette. <laughs> Just get this batter into the pan. We gotta cook that omelette up for a couple of minutes on either side. Turn the heat down low and let it cook gently. You don't need to flip it, it's not a pancake, but I'm gonna give it a go just for the camera. There you go, just about. After all, we're gonna be cutting this omelette up, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Meanwhile, you can prepare your vegetables for the egg fried rice. Now you can use as much veg as you want, get scraps from your fridge and throw them in. I'm just using some broccoli that I had left over, a carrot, some spring onions, some peas and some ginger. Okay, so omelette comes out onto a plate. We can start frying off our vegetables. Now it's important to add the vegetables that take the longest to cook first. So I'm adding my broccoli, then the carrot, ginger and spring onions. Woo! Now usually I would be using my wok, but I'm outside and I only have this pan. I'm also gonna add some extra garlic, throw that in now. And I really wanna get some color on everything, just to add some more flavor. Again, it's a simple dish. When we can add flavor, you've gotta maximize it. I'm now gonna chop up my homemade omelet and throw that into the pan as well. I don't know about you guys, but when I cook rice, I cook a huge batch so that whenever I'm hungry, I can just have some rice with whatever dish that I've made. So I've got some leftover rice here, and that's the best rice to use for an egg fried rice dish. So just sprinkle in your pre-cooked rice. So this is a little bland. We need to season it up. I'm gonna add some soy sauce, some sriracha, and some of my dad's homemade chili oil. If you want the recipe for that, check out my recent ramen video. Click the link up here. Now we're talking, look at that, that is egg fried rice at its finest. It smells absolutely beautiful. And I just wanna say guys, if you don't wanna go through the effort of making that omelet, even though it takes two minutes, you can just crumble in tofu when you're cooking the vegetables and that will add the protein and give it almost egg texture. But this really does look like an omelet. So let's serve this beautiful egg fried rice up with the crispy onion, some more of that lovely chili oil, some chopped spring onions and some sesame seeds. Three taps for luck. And voila. Oh, 
Oh yes, now we're talking. There is my no egg, egg fried rice. That looks like it's got egg in it and it's gonna taste like it's got egg in it. And it's low cost, it's quick, it's gonna be tasty. Let's just prove all those factors by tasting it now. Oh yeah. Mmm, that is everything you want in an egg fried rice. Beautiful. Follow those extra steps to bring more flavour and add more oomph to your dish. Mmm. Guys, 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 look at this. Just happened naturally, coriander seeds have dropped down into my stones and is growing here. Look at this coriander. That's how easy gardening is. You don't have to do anything, it just grows on its own. Coriander. Anyway, this is a cauliflower. Cauliflower are cheap as chips, humble ingredient, but can be spectacular. Why do, why do chefs in Michelin star restaurants use cauliflower all the time if it's just bland and boring? This is a great vehicle for flavor. And when it's cooked, it can get creamy, buttery, and beautiful. And today we are making a classic dish, cauliflower cheese, but with a twist. We're keeping these whole. You can put this in the center of your dinner table and just dive into it. First up, what we need to do is blanch these off. That means just cook them in some boiling water for about 10 minutes, just until they're tender. Then we can make our cheese sauce. The humble cauliflower. Wait till you see what I'm gonna do with it. So whilst my second cauliflower is cooking off, I'm gonna pick some leeks. Now guys, if you can grow just one thing that you eat all the time, like kale or something, in a big bucket on your doorstep or on your balcony, that is a great way of being frugal and saving money because growing food saves you so much money. And look at this, beautiful leek, fresh from the ground, cheap as chips. I am Welsh and I grow leeks. That is beautiful. I've also got to get some sage for this cheese sauce too. So I'm gonna finally chop up this leek, the sage, and also some garlic. When you're chopping herbs, finely, roll it into a cigar and just shred it. So to make the cheese sauce, add some butter to a saucepan and then saute off that lovely onion, garlic and sage. Cook the leeks until they're softened, seasoning with salt and pepper whilst they're cooking. Mm. Homemade kombucha, I gotta show you the recipe one time. Anyway, whilst I got you, my cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen, the most recent one, is packed full of simple recipes that are also protein packed as well. So please can you get one? You can get a signed copy from my website by clicking the link below and my lovely mum sends them out herself. So support the family, support the channel by getting a signed copy of the cookbook. Link below this video, thank you. So I'm just turning the heat down low here and adding some plain flour, all purpose flour about a tablespoon and that's going to help thicken this sauce. Cook the flour out for a couple minutes then add some non-dairy milk. To make the cheese sauce cheesy I'm going to add some Dijon mustard, some nutritional yeast and some grated cheese. So you can choose whatever cheese you like. If you've got a favourite plant-based cheese then add that just make sure it's grated and melts well. Guys, look at that cheesy sauce. That's crazy, it smells so good. So I'm gonna pour this over my parboiled cauliflowers now, and then get that into the oven until it's beautiful and golden. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh my God, you wanted simple, low-cost meals. Look what I'm giving you. This is gourmet, baby. They are smothered in that cheese sauce, wow. You know what I might actually do? Sprinkle a little bit more grated cheese on top, then get it into the oven. Actually, the cheese, that looks too good. I'm gonna get this in the oven. Guys, look at this cauliflower cheese. Whole roasted, look at them babies. Oh yes. All I wanna do is tuck into this right now. We have a really noisy neighbour ruining our video shoot today, but I'm in the countryside, I can't do anything about it. But what I can do is film the third recipe, the final recipe tomorrow, and now we could go mushroom hunting to get mushrooms for the mushroom stroganoff. 
But first, let's taste this. Oh yes, look at that. That's crisp on top. And you can serve this with whatever you want. You could eat it just like this with salad or pasta or rice or potatoes. Oh, it's like butter. And you want to get some of this lovely cheesy sauce. Oh, 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 oh. look at this beautifulness. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. That cauliflower is perfectly cooked. Mmm. Oh, that is indulgent. It takes on the flavors so well. And that cheese sauce, unreal. Mm. Okay guys, armed with my mushroom book and my basket, let's go and find some infamous, hopefully porcini mushrooms. Let's go. Ah, look at Wales. Oh, it's God's country. Right. Crocs are going into 4x4 mode, sport mode, goggles are on. Let's get into the woodland, deep into the woodland. <laughs> so a few weeks ago when I was in this forest, there was a mushroom called birch bullet, which was absolutely delicious. And it's been raining since then, so I'm hoping there's gonna be loads in here now. Who knows? Let's go and find. Wow, look how beautiful it is. It's not wet as I thought it'd be. What is that? Birch bullet. You found a birch bullet. Look at that, boys. Oh my gosh. Ah, look at that. Look at the thickness there. Yes, I knew we were going to find one today. We've got enough for one meal, boys. I think we've hit the jackpot here. We've got some more. And a beautiful little one there. <laughs> right, we've got one and a half portions. Let's find some more. Guys, not the best hunt today. We got three. Well, we got, we got about one portion. <laughs> we'll come back when it rains. So we didn't quite find enough mushrooms to make a mushroom stroganoff with forage mushrooms. But luckily, I went to the supermarket, got some closed cut mushrooms and they are so reasonably priced. So we can make a delicious mushroom stroganoff today. That's plant-based, it tastes amazing. First thing you're gonna wanna do is finally chop up some onions and some garlic. Get those sorted in a pan until they're lovely and caramelized. Take some time with caramelizing the onions. It will result in a more flavorsome stroganoff. Meanwhile, chop up your mushrooms lovely and fine. I like to keep them whole when I'm chopping them so we get lovely slices in the finished stroganoff. Season with a generous amount of sea salt and cracked black pepper. And our beautiful birch bullets. I'm just gonna prep these and clean them off gently and throw them in the pan as well and let everything cook down together. So this flour, now that the mushrooms are lovely and caramelized, is gonna help make the sauce really luxurious and creamy in the long run. So just cook it out for a couple of minutes, then deglaze the pan with some vegetable stock. <sighs> Considering all that's in there is onions, garlic, mushrooms, and stock, and a bit of seasoning, it smells absolutely rich and beautiful. I'm gonna add some more flavorings now. Lemon zest and lemon juice will help freshen this up. Some mustard, I'm using whole grain. And then I'm gonna stir in some oat creme fraiche. Now you can use non-dairy milk, coconut milk, oat or soy cream, whatever you can get your hands on to make this super creamy and delicious. This is beautiful and creamy. Let's give it a little taste. Mmm. Wow, those flavors are gonna get even better. So we just need to let that cook away for about five, 10 minutes. And in that time, you can prepare your garnishes. So I'm serving mine with some pasta. You can serve yours with whatever you want, rice, potatoes. This is gonna be delicious. Let's serve it up.
This is so creamy and mushroom indulgence. That's what I call this one. If you like mushrooms, you're gonna love this one. So I'm gonna serve the creamy stroganoff on top of my tagliatelle and garnish with some toasted almonds and freshly chopped parsley. Then give it a taste. So there we go guys, there's three simple, tasty recipes that don't cost a fortune. And I know students will be able to make these recipes if you put in the effort, of course. So let's give this a taste, this dragon off the last recipe. Experiment with things like oyster mushrooms would be amazing. King oyster mushrooms, even shiitake. Mmm, that is really good. Love the little bit of lemon that's coming through there and the mushrooms are so meaty and I tasted one of the mushrooms we picked yesterday. So, so succulent. As I said, experiment with different mushrooms and don't forget, if you make these recipes, take a picture and tag me on Instagram, at Gaz Oakley. You'll find more recipes on there too. I'll see you soon with a new video. Comment if you like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.